tried so hard to see it Took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we I trust that you're having a wonderful Christmas season as we prepare for the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ when God became flesh. I entitled my message, Seven Gifts. There are seven gifts in the Christmas story. Well, there's more than seven, but there's seven that I've highlighted today for this message. And I want to begin reading in uh, St. Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world shall be registered. The census first took place while Curius was governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which was called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. He was to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were there in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. 
and they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good word, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made it widely known, the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at the things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Wow, what a great story. So many things happening, so many emotions, so many decisions, so much prophecy being fulfilled. The, the, the story of Christ's birth in Luke. I want to look at that today and kind of unpack it and see some hidden Christmas gifts that are in there in the Christmas story. And uh, I want to look at those together with you today. One of the things that I realize is that, you know, this is my 28th Christmas season here at New Hope. And so I've tried to, I've seen the Christmas story from just about, um, in my mind, every which way you could present it. And then you go back and read it again, and different things pop out to you. The Bible really is a living book, isn't it, friends? First gift I want to look at is the gift of courage. The gift that comes from the story of courage. Because in Luke, what I just read in verse 10, it said, chapter 2, 10, it says, the angel begins by saying, it might say in your translation, fear not. And Avi says, do not be afraid, for I give you good tidings of great joy. Good news. This, not to be afraid of, certainly when you see something uh, supernatural or something outside of your normal routine, you can be startled. But the, the angel it conveys first, you do not have to be afraid of me. Be, have courage. Fear not. I want to talk to you about that gift of courage. What is it for? We have the gift as believers if we, as we embrace the babe who became uh, a man and, passed, and died on the cross and, uh, and took our place for forgiveness of our sins. When we embrace him, not just as Savior, but as Lord, something happens in us. There's a courage for us that we can face the future. We don't have to be afraid of the future. Certainly the times we live today and what we read in the newspapers and see on the Internet, there's a lot of reason for concern. And I get concerned. I, I get we want to be engaged without being entangled. But we don't have to live in fear. Matthew 6, 25 it says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not life, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. The Bible, St. Matthew is saying to us that we don't have to live in fear. We, we don't have to live with anxiety because we can trust that God will take care of us. I don't know what the future holds. I'm not a prophet or the son of a prophet, but I will tell you, no matter what happens, like the songwriter wrote, many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. That baby in the manger is my Savior and Lord, and he knows the future, and I'm in good hands because I hang on to his hands. Matthew uh, a few verses later says for all these things the Gentiles seek in chapter 6 for your heavenly father knows that you what you need seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things yes yep we've got a lot we go into this season now of, uh, in our government in our in our country with COVID and uh, uh, different uh, political things and uncertainties and uh, certainly um, the, the, the only thing we can be certain about is uncertainties but we have inflation record inflation or, or re certainly recent years um, we, how is it going to all play out well we because we serve a fear not Jesus he says put our trust in him I trust him to take care of me my family my church and, and beloved, to take care of you as a believer. We don't have to live in fear. We, we can stand out as people of faith and, we, and, and of courage. So we can have that gift. I think it's interesting that right there in the middle of the story, fear not, fear not. It's repeated over and over in scripture. 
We also can have courage not to just look in around us now, but to look into eternity. We have the things of this world we don't have to be afraid of, and we have the things of eternity. We don't have to be afraid of eternity. Jesus, uh, the Bible says in John 11, Jesus says, I am the resurrection of the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Hallelujah. So we don't have to, we don't have to fear life. We have the courage to face life, and we also have the courage to faith, face death. What an advantage we have. As believers, right there in the Christmas story, we're reminded not to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid of what God's doing and working. It was an incredible time. God becoming flesh, the gift that he's giving us. And the angel says, do not be afraid. I've got a story to tell you. This day in the city of David, Christ the Lord has been born. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we don't have to, we can embrace the things of, of the Lord. We don't have to be afraid. The second gift I want to look at today is the gift of joy. Well, I think Christians ought to be the most joyous people in the world. And we see that, in, in, that the angel says, do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good news, glad tidings, good news of what? Of great joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. We should, have the, we should be the most joyous people. Last week we talked about happiness is what comes from the outside to us. But joy comes from an inside out. And you can have that joy, my friends. Because it's, uh, it will be to those, when, and instead of fear, instead of being afraid, great joy. Boy, those are opposite, aren't they? Let me tell you what, when you're scared, you don't have joy. <laughs> but when you have joy, you can know that it's going to be good. Our, our, my experience with Christ, you know, there is no bad news when it comes to the Lord. When you make him Lord of your life, it's only good news. I know God is just and there will be a judgment. But when you commit your life to him, it's all good news. The Christmas story is a story of good news news and great joy. Matthew said it this way, and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save the people from their sins. We'll talk about salvation in a minute, but man, that'll all make you happy. I've been saved from my sin. I've been saved, saved from the payment of sin. I've been, I've been saved uh, so that, I don't, that my sins have been taken as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. And you can have that too if you put your trust in Jesus, if you receive him as your... Lord and Savior, you can have that too if you haven't already done that. Psalm 95 one says, Come let us sing to, to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm so grateful that this baby, this, this babe in the manger, was the Lord and Savior who brought great joy into my life. Hallelujah. I don't have to be afraid and I can live in joy. The third gift is that gift of salvation. That's the key. When, when we talk about the Lord of our salvation, we're talking about that baby in a manger grew up to be a man who died for my sin, who rose again. Praise God, I've been saved. I've been bought with a price. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now that's a verse that many people, just church folks, are familiar with. It's a gift. And it's right there in the crib. Then when that baby came, that baby came as a gift of salvation to be saved from our sins, to be redeemed. John chapter 1 says it this way. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, but the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But listen to this. But as many as received him, accepted him, received the Lord, received the Christ child to him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. Many who's received him, I pray today, right now, that you would receive Jesus Christ. That you would put your faith in him. That you would accept him as your Lord and Savior. It's easy to see him as a, in a baby in a manger. He looks so innocent and helpless. But know that he grew up to be a man, a man of faith, a man of strength, a man, a sinless man who willingly went to the cross on our behalf. And if you receive him, hallelujah, you can be a child of God. Number four, the gift of grace. That's the gift to walk out our faith, isn't it? For by grace, Ephesians chapter two says, you've been saved through faith and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, hallelujah. It's an unmerited gift. There's your gift right there. When you accept Jesus and you're saved through faith, you get the gift. It's right there in the Christmas story. What are you going to do with the baby? What are you going to, are you going to accept that, 
that this was God made flesh. Hallelujah. Praise God who could forgive sin. I thank God that I've accepted him as Lord and Savior. And I have that unmerited gift. That's what grace is. It's a gift. If, if grace means unmerited favor. And we have that gift. It is not of your own doing, Paul writes to the Ephesians. It is a gift of God, not a result of works. It's not about being good. Sometimes we hear about the Christmas spirit and we see a story and people start doing good. And, and that's okay. And in one sense, it reminds us that how we live is important. But without Jesus, it's just, it, it's just, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's worthless without Christ, except for that moment. It has no eternal value. But with the Lord, as we walk out our faith, hallelujah, we can, we can say it has, what we do has nothing to do with us, our salvation, to get it. But how we live shows that we have it today. I hope that you have Jesus Christ. I hope as you, as you read this story in Luke, you recognize that baby. That's the key to, to joy. That's the key to courage. Hallelujah. That's the key to salvation. He is salvation. He's the person of salvation. And with it, we receive the gift of grace through our faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except he comes through him. So we have that gift of grace as we walk out our faith and our salvation in joy and courageously. We also have the gift of peace, and that's so important. Boy, peace and Christmas go together, don't they? That's what verse 14 says. Uh, it says that, um, I'm going to go back to it. I want to read it again. I know I read that in the beginning, but I just want to focus on that. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace and goodwill to men. That's a gift. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's right there in the story. Peace. Boy, do we need peace in this troubled time, don't we? Boy, do we need to have peace, a peace deep in our spirit. Not as the world gives, the peace that the Lord gives. That's temporary. No, this is the peace I give to you. Hallelujah. That's a peace that lasts. That's a lasting peace. And we can have that. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I can have peace in my heart that, my, as I, that I am just before the Lord. I can also have peace in the surroundings around me that God will see me through. I can have courage and joy because I will walk out my, my walk with Christ with that unmerited favor that comes through grace. That's what's been, I've been saved by grace. How about you? Have, you? have you accepted the gift of salvation from the Lord today? Number six is favor. Wow, there's a word that's really popular today. Do you have the favor of the Lord? Why do some people seem to have uh, the favor and others not? Listen to what Luke chapter two, verse 14 says. Glory to God in the highest, heaven and on earth peace on those who his favor rests. That's what it says in the NIV. See, I like it, that version there. When it says his favor rests, I want his favor. How about you? And we can, you can receive that gift. As we walk out in obedience, God gives us favor. We make choices. You become a child. Hey, I love children in our church. Now, my kids have grown up now. I have grandkids, and I love all the little kids. But my kids, <laughs> my grandkids... There's a special favor there. When we become children of God, God, God loves everybody. God is love. When you want the favor of God and blessing in your life, you receive Jesus Christ as, as, his, your, as your Savior. You receive his Son, and I promise you, you will get the favor that comes with that. God loves his church, and Jesus loves his bride. You need to know that. There's an acknowledgement there. When you become part of the body of Christ, you, have, you can have that today. Doesn't mean all your problems will be gone. You'll never have a problem or, or ever have a setback, but you'll have the favor, the blessings of God on your life. And lastly, gift number seven is the, is the gift of gift giving. What? What do you mean? How's that a gift? We know that as we give back, as we give out, that, that we know, well, look what it says. It says what the shepherds did in, in, in that, what I read you that story in verse 17. Now, when they had seen him, they kept it to themselves. No, that's not what the Bible says. When they had seen him, they made widely known the sayings which were told them concerning the child. They went back and told people what they had seen. Him. They shared the good news. That's what we're supposed to do as believers. We're supposed to share what we know, but also we need to share what we have. We share the glad tidings of good. We share the good news. That's what I'm doing now. As you watch this, or uh, whether it's this Sunday or down the road, I'm I hope I'm reminding you, this is good news. Jesus is good news. Committing your life to Christ is good news. I'm sharing these glad tidings. You can have peace. You can have joy. You can have unmerited favor. You can have the blessings of God. You can have these things. You can have God's grace. You can have the courage to live day to day 
It comes through Jesus Christ, acknowledging him, receiving him, and accepting him. You know, God is the greatest gift giver. He modeled it for us, didn't he? When in most, one of the most familiar verses in the Bible, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved us. He loved me. He loved you. That he gave Jesus. That's the Christmas story. It culminates in, on the resurrection, uh, but, but, and before that, of course, the death and the resurrection and, uh, of, of, the, of Christ. But the gift starts when God is made flesh, Emmanuel, God with us in the flesh. The greatest gift ever given. And so because we follow him, we need to be givers too. And it's a great gift. In fact, we know that we, what we've learned, the blessing of giving is, is referenced in Acts when Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than receive. As we grow uh, in, in maturity, we recognize that even Christmas becomes not so much about what's under the tree with our name on it, but what we put under the tree. What I mean by that is not about what we get for Christmas, but what we're able to give. And, and I'm a big advocate of not overspending and not getting into debt and not, not, you know, not blowing out the, up the budget so you can have stuff. But there is something about giving as we grow older and we learn as we walk out our faith. It's a Christ-like thing. Jesus said, you're actually more blessed to give than receive. Now, when we're young and little, we, we, we can't get our mind around that. We want to tear the paper up and... I get that. But as we grow in our faith and grow in our experience of life, we recognize blessing others. That's the real secret of joy. That's the secret of blessing. Well, these are seven gifts. Seven gifts in, that, in those 22 verses or whatever it was, 20 verses that I read of the, out of the book of uh, Luke as he uh, is, uh, walks us through the story of what was said. I'm so grateful that we have this this record of what took place we also have it in, in Matthew 2 and but Luke really he really sets it up doesn't he he's such a as a physician he's a man of detail don't miss these gifts accept them and receive them they're for you they're for me they're for he, he, he's not a God which withholds good things I believe without a shadow of a doubt that he wants these things for all of us he wants us to have um, joy he wants us to have courage he wants us to have salvation he wants us to have a life of grace and favor and, and generosity and peace. These are gifts for us. Now, now, you may not get everything you want from people in your life, but don't miss these gifts because these are available. And the price has already been paid for them. And they've already got your name on it. I pray you'll receive them today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so grateful we can come before you. Thank you for your word, Lord. We, we openly want, we want all that you have for us, Lord. So God, first of all, we commit and rededicate our life to you. We accept you as Lord and Savior. And we receive the promises in the Christmas story for us. We receive these gifts now and we're, with, with gratitude. We thank you for it in your precious name. Amen. God bless you. God loves you. And so do I. I had a, a thing in my throat halfway through, but I wrote it out.